Welcome to Alive in Baghdad, Uncut. I'm Brian Conley, director of Alive in Baghdad. Every week, we'll bring you up to date on our stories from Iraq. We can consistently depend on the news to bring us statistics on death tolls, injuries, and numbers of bombings or shootings each day in Iraq. What we can't expect is continued, in-depth, follow-up coverage of the lasting toll of these bombings and attacks. When, in 2006, I began to see some photos of maimed U.S. soldiers in army hospitals in the U.S., I started really wondering about Iraq's walking wounded. If U.S. soldiers are coming back missing an arm or leg or both, and they're often wearing protective armor when hit, one must wonder how Iraqi civilians fare in these attacks. I began thinking it would be really important for us to interview some survivors of a car bombing or mortar attack. We've always tried to find stories that were interesting, but which also pushed the limit for Iraq coverage, attempting to look at people, events, and experience that might not otherwise be discussed. We also made it a priority to treat our content and our subjects as humanly as possible. <laughs> When a market near Assam's house was hit by a car bomb, he was outside of Iraq at the time. But we talked and decided this would be a good chance to try to meet some survivors of a car bombing. It turned out he had friends who survived the attack, so it was quite easy to find some people who were willing to be interviewed. Of course, what we found was that there were not only horrible physical debilities that survivors of car bombings might have to deal with, such as those shown here, there are many other ways that one's life might be affected. The explosions certainly don't distinguish amongst economic standing either. One of the men interviewed here worked at a stall for selling cigarettes and Pepsi and lost his entire stock to the destruction of the blast. The other man owned a restaurant which was destroyed along with his car. These men will be scarred forever by this bombing. Now multiply that times the number of bombings each month in Baghdad. Some only wound one or two people, but often they wound dozens. If even a small percent of those injured were permanently debilitated, then the war is creating a virtual army of Iraqi amputees. As discussions move forward about Iraq's next phase, its security, its ability to continue as a state whether or not the U.S. withdraws, keeping in mind the walking wounded, the inheritance of the war, is desperately important to Iraq's future.